A new era is set to begin for the Iron Avenger as some mysterious force attempts to dismantle the life of Tony Stark piece by piece. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Invincible Iron Man issue number one, a brand new series from Jerry Duggan, and find out what happens next together, shall we? All right then, so as we dig into the book proper, I'll admit I was actually a little worried starting this new series because I basically didn't read word one of that last Cantwell one. Thankfully though, Invincible Iron Man 2022 offers up probably the freshest start and easiest new reader entry point I've seen in a comic in a very long time. You see, Tony is actually writing a book about his life, which means he goes out of his way to recount some of his greatest adventures, but also, in an interesting twist for a guy who's shown to be so narcissistic, he's actually having a hard time writing about himself. He tries to tell the story of how he was captured during wartime and how he built his first suit, but he says that, ah, you know what, everyone's sick about that, I'll just circle back to that. Oh, well, what about if I talk about where I live? But which place? I've had so many amazing houses over the years. All the different towers, the mansions, that place from the movie. Nah, nah, I'll just come back to that later too. Oh, I can talk about my amazing fortune. Granted, it's not amazing as it used to be. It seems that Tony has spent a huge chunk of his money trying to buy up dangerous weapons from the black market to keep them out of the hands of villains. He talks a little about his friends, the Avengers, and all the different Avengers teams he's been on on all the different coasts, while also dropping reference to perhaps a new villain who he's going to be pursuing. I'm of course talking about Fei Long, the mutant-hating Chinese rocket scientist who you'll already be very familiar if you read Jerry Duggan's work over in the X-Men books recently. I actually kind of love the idea that he's going to be pulling double duty and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a crossover between the X-Men book and this series sooner rather than later. We also learn where Tony is living currently right now, a very unassuming brownstone. Geez, I wonder if him and Bruce Wayne have the same real estate agent. It's here we see Tony putting the finishing touches on his newest and currently only armor, the Mark 70. Unfortunately, something goes horribly wrong, and Tony's modest, unassuming home ends up getting blown sky high. He's almost killed, but miraculously survives. Unfortunately, his elderly neighbor next door wasn't nearly as lucky. Tony recovers in hospital, surrounded by his friends and allies, Riri Wilson, Rhodey, and even Captain America. The general consensus is the explosion was related to some sort of reactor issue, but Tony doesn't make mistakes when it comes to his reactor, clearly someone hacked it externally and tried to kill him. And if they could do that, it means that they're incredibly smart, and it looks like Tony has himself a brand new mystery he's going to have to unravel. But first things first, though, making things right with the dead. Tony pays for his neighbor's funeral, and then even goes a step further, giving power of attorney to his lawyer, Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk, to try and pay out everyone else damages, even people who weren't actually affected by the explosion. Jen naturally says that this is a crazy the idea that could very well end up absolutely totaling Tony's bank accounts, but it's clear that he just wants this problem to go away and soon. With his home destroyed too, it means that Tony is going to have to set up shop somewhere different. Luckily for him, he finds an old cab depot deep in Jersey. In his internal monologue, Tony says this place fits him perfectly. Whenever he has a problem, he always has a bad habit of throwing himself into caves, be it metaphorical ones like with his drinking or very real ones. With a place to hang his head and to work, Tony finds does manage to get the Mark 70 up and running. He takes it for a very much needed test drive around New York City. And it's while Iron Man is out flying, he ends up getting intercepted by another mech-suited individual, this one very much out for Tony's blood. Naturally, Tony assumes whoever this guy is trying to kill him must also be the guy who blew up his house. Unfortunately, Tony can't really make an ID because whatever this guy's suit is, it can modulate voices. Things go from bad to worse when a news chopper makes the scene, meaning not only must Tony fight for his life, but he also has to save the news people before they end up crashing and dying. Iron Man's able to do all of this and get this new mystery villain on the ropes. It's here, though, that the guy actually makes some very gross insinuations about Tony's relationship with his new young mentee, Riri, while also being sure to call him a capitalist pig just for good measure. Iron Man is ready to unload on this guy when he starts to have some ideas, and that is that all of this just kind of lines up to perfectly. Perfectly. Iron Man unmasks the suit and realizes that the guy inside wasn't actually piloting it. He's some poor schmuck who got kidnapped two days ago, and it's clear whoever blew up Tony's house wanted him to blow this guy away. And have the media watch as Iron Man killed a perfectly innocent dude. It's clear who's ever out to get Iron Man right now wants to attack him at every absolute angle in his life, personal, professional, and superhero. Obviously, this revelation leaves Tony feeling pretty damn low, and when recovering at like 
make him feel low, they decide to hit up AA for a little solace. Tony grabs a black coffee and listens to everyone's story. However, when he leaves the church for the night, something strange begins to happen to him. He starts slurring his words and slipping all over the place, almost like he was drunk. But that's impossible, right? Not unless someone actively drugged him and hoped that people would film him with their camera phones. Because after all, if you can't kill Tony Stark, have him fall off the wagon and fall from grace is almost just as good, right, as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Invincible Iron Man issue number one, everybody, and I gotta say, Jerry Duggan actually does a pretty solid job kicking off this new series. As I mentioned before, it's really easy to get into, even if you haven't read Iron Man in forever. I gotta say, I got a very positive, almost Daredevil-esque vibe off this series. Tony's life is coming apart at the seams, someone is attacking him from the shadows, and he doesn't know where to look or who to trust. It's a good, solid mystery plot, and I don't think we get a lot of those with Iron Man stories, so I'm definitely interested to see where this one is gonna go. Overall, I'd give this one a very positive 8 out of 10. Between this and Dark Web, X-Men Jerry Duggan has been having a very good week. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way everyone, I will see you again next time, Bye bye